Hello there and thank you for staying tuned to LTN. You are just on time to catch your weekly business segment program of Business Tuesday. Remember, on Business Tuesday is the program where I bring you a highlight of all the business news that made it to the headlines in the last few days. First, let's take a look at what's coming up right ahead. President Uru Kenyatta orders rollout of integrated management information system in all counties. It is our joint responsibility as the executive of this nation to be at the forefront of ensuring that the resources availed to us are indeed put to the best use Controversial China Dog Meat Festival held despite opposition from activists. Just One Dry implicated in contraband sugar saga. Speaks absolving his company from any blame. They will get to the bottom of this, I'm sure. And I have nothing to hide. They have come to me as one of the importers. We have given them each and every document we have. They have taken samples. The question is, why is only my name being splashed all over? Kenya IRS Group Chief Executive reveals plans for fuel hedging due to an increase in cost of fuel. We are looking at restarting our hedging policy. This is a topic which is ongoing in discussions with the board. It's not that much a discussion rather than a um, technical preparation of this. And Busia County Budget and Population Committee disbanded on primary claims. <laughs> Kazi yangu kama speaker ni kwenda kwa bunge na kupronounce ya kwamba vyama imesema nataka kuconstitute the membership. Thank you for joining me. My name is Eddie Nyadwa and the program begins right now. First, President Hur Kenyatta has directed the Ministry of Information, Communication and Technology to create internet connectivity to all the 47 counties so that they can be connected to the Integrated Management Information System, IFMIS. Speaking during the National and County Government Coordinating Devolution Summit, the President said that IFMIS will ensure efficiency and transparency in the use of public resources in the counties. It is our joint responsibility as the executive of this nation to be at the forefront of ensuring that the resources availed to us are indeed put to the best use and we ensure that there is no leakage or seepage of these resources which are ultimately aimed at improving the lives of our people. Indeed, the unity and common purpose prevailing in our political sphere today provides us with an opportunity to build upon the successes we have made so far. If both levels of government work this way, then we can be able to achieve a lot and work within trust, because even delivering the four agendas, until we trust each other. And I think that is the only way we can be able to achieve this and be able to implement it effectively. Revitalization of our manufacturing sector, one of our four pillars, will greatly contribute to creating employment opportunities for our people at the local level, And now we go straight to the U.S. where President Donald Trump has ordered an end to the separation of migrant children from their parents on the U.S. border, reversing a tough uh, policy under heavy pressure from his fellow Republicans, Democrats, and the international community. The spectacular about turn comes after more than 2,300 children were stripped from their parents and adult relatives after illegally crossing into the U.S. border since May 5th and placed in 10 camps and other facilities with no way to contact their relatives. However, the change of mind of Trump has left immigration officials uh, unsure on how to execute the new presidential order. But 
Democrats, they want open borders and they don't mind crime. Think of it. So last week, they thought, oh, they have a great issue. And, you know, I get credit. I don't know if it's true or not, but they're saying I have good political instinct. Who does? In fact, some people have said I have the greatest political instinct in 50 years. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. But I have my own feeling. And when I heard them talking about the children, first of all, they were using pictures taken in 2014 when Barack Obama was president. I wasn't president. And what I learned is one thing. Our facilities are cleaner, better kept, and better run. That's the one thing I learned, okay? I saw that. But what we have is two extremes. And I liked it. I said, hey, this is fine for us. The Democrats want open borders. They want anybody they want, including MS-13, pouring into the country. And the Democrats don't like ICE. These are great, brave, tough people. These people are much tougher than MS-13. They don't like Border Patrol. They don't like your police. They don't like anybody. The Democrats want to protect illegals coming into this country, some of whom are not good, some of whom cause lots of problems in the worst possible way. They want to protect illegals coming into the country much more so than they want to protect you. And that's not where we're coming from, okay? So, so I defined it today. The Democrats want open borders and they don't mind crime. We want very tight, very strict borders. And by the way, you saw a 70-year low. With all the complaining I'm doing, we've done a very good job. And we have taken thousands. We have taken, we got to get that wall built all the way across. And they don't want it. That's like a symbol. They're only good at one thing. What's their term? Resist. It's the party of Maxine Waters. Do you believe her? No, no. No, no. This has become the party of Maxine Waters and Nancy Pelosi. That's who it is. So they don't mind crime. They want open borders. We want really tough borders. And we want people to come in. We want people to come in through the legal process. What about the thousands of people? What about the thousands of people that have gone through this process, that are waiting online to come into our country, and then we're going to let these people pour in? We have no idea who they are. Today, I signed an executive order. We're going to keep families together, but the border is going to be just as tough as it's been. So uh, Trump apparently signed an executive order that says he's no longer separating families a couple of hours ago, but uh, he's still detaining them and he's still going to detain families. Whether it's together or apart, it's unfair uh, and that's not how we treat human beings. I think there are a couple of things that are really worrisome about this. Uh, one is that it's being uh, kind of lauded as being a potential end to family separation, but ultimately it's still going to keep children in jails. Uh, and when people are coming to the United States uh, in good faith, seeking safety, seeking refuge, to put them in jails indefinitely now, uh, which is what is proposed to happen, uh, that doesn't seem like what I think or the Equal Voice Network thinks that our country stands for. No, we haven't received any guidance. We're actually monitoring the, uh, the situation. Uh, and then we'll uh, implement whatever guidance we get uh, from, uh, you know, from uh, Washington, D.C. I do not believe that you will find anybody, uh, if you listen to the uh, president himself, I do not believe that you have anybody that 
thinks that separating families is a good thing. We take care of the children very well. What is not ideal is that they're actually here. The ideal situation is for these children and family units to be in their home country uh, in a stable situation. It's really not new. It started in 2013, really, really skyrocketed in uh, uh, 2014. We were going through this very same dynamic of, hey, you know, you're holding families, you're overcrowding the cells or whatever. This has to be addressed through immigration reform. If not, we will be discussing this same thing two years from now. And now we cross over to Asia where, despite a South Korean court ruling that slaughtering of dog meat was illegal, the annual Yulin dog meat celebration continued uninterrupted in China. Diners stuck in bowls of stewed canine in South China were, where activists are rethinking their tactic to counter a notorious festival that butchers thousands of dogs daily. Imagine the Chinese enjoying a dog delicacy. Yeah, While the Chinese are eating dogs in Kenya in Nakuru County, a man was arrested for slaughtering cats and using their meat to make samosa. Hmm. Anyway, now let's move to the bitter sugar politics or rather bitter sugar affairs whereby um, just what right the chairman of Rai Group and West Kenya Sugar Companies has strongly denied the involvement of his farms in the importation of contraband sugar. Rai blames unscrupulous traders and millers who have colluded with some millers to distribute the unprocessed sugar into the market. He further points a blaming figure to the leader of majority in National Assembly, Aden Dwale, for unfairly targeting West Kenya Sugar Company in the ongoing saga. Here are some of the experts of an interview he earlier did with NTV. There is not one kilo of contraband sugar I have imported. Whatever quantities I have imported, and I agree uh, what Honorable Dwali has uh, accused me of, 186,000 tons, we have imported. We have imported it legally, following all due process, uh, according to the law of Kenya. If you remember uh, last year, uh, there was a severe shortage of sugar, of uh, maize, and milk, and the government uh, allowed the importation, according to this uh, Kenya Gazette of uh, 13th May. And whatever I have imported has been imported officially through the port of Mombasa. And in fact, the information he has got, I believe, is from the legal sources. Yes, there are uh, sister companies within the group. You know, when you import uh, 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 a quantity of sugar which has to be financed, West Kenya alone was not able to finance that quantity. And there is no restriction in, in Kenya that other companies cannot import. During this uh, exemption period, a lot of other companies were allowed, other than mine. And whatever I have imported, through those four or five companies, each and every one of them has approval, starting from the sugar directorate, cabs, 
when the shoe was landed in uh, Mombasa, it was cleared through customs. All due revenues were paid, port charges were paid. In fact, we were the only company who have also paid demurrages on those ships. If you remember, there was a lot of maize ships in the port. They were very congested at that time. There have been other ships carrying sugar, which were cleared within two, three days directly to the port. And I will give you the names. And Honorable Dwale is only targeting my companies. I saw the interview you had yesterday. He gave you a list of the companies. I have printed them. And I, I saw the way he was turning the pages. It was a long list. But he's only chosen to highlight my companies, not anybody else. And the question is, why? Who is he protecting? There was a, over a million tons of sugar. Or like the Daily Nation has said today, they're talking about kilos now, not even tons. So I can say over 1 billion kilos of sugar was imported in 2017. What I have imported is under 18% of the total importation. And I will explain to you why the quantity I have imported is what I produce in a normal year using local sugarcane. The fundamental reason why duty-free sugar was allowed to be imported was that there was a tremendous shortage and prices were going haywire. In May, I remember the price was something like 6,000, 7,000 shillings a bag. And the government had to take action because end of the day, the common man was suffering. And whatever I've imported, we have got all the documentation which I will present to the parliamentary committee when I'm invited. And I will table them. Each and every document I have, I have not taken one shortcut. I have paid all due revenue to the government. Now still saying with matters concerning the counterpart sugar here in the country is that the cabinet secretary for agriculture Mwangi Kiunduri admitted before a joint parliamentary committee on trade and agriculture that there was excess importation of sugar in 2017 as a result of the free duty import window issued through a gazette notice from the treasury. The minister of industrialization and trade led by Mohammed reiterated that he did not find mercury in samples of the industrialized sugar impounded in Nisili and Ruiru, but revealed that the sugar contained higher percentages of copper and lead. However, there are those who did not apply, and the only way we could have known that they have been imported after inspection, because we inspected at the point of our, 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 the, the entry point, was through KRA. KRA. And uh, as we reconciled, we noted now that we are already surpassing the required quantities. And that is how we ended up with the uh, ex extra, the excess sugar in the market. Little did we know that there are other prayers that who came in. And therefore, applications went on as usual. However, we already we can even, we have tabled that list of those mirrors and other importers who applied and regulations we have followed. There wasn't enough sugar in the country and even in the region. And that is why it was uh, open uh, uh, for everybody, including millers, and then we restricted, but we amended it now to uh, October. It's already sufficient or more than enough sugar. And that is why we, had, we uh, amended that gazette notice and brought it uh, from 31st to October. Who inspected this sugar before they left the country? Or if they were inspected here in country, what the test results were. To the best of our knowledge, there is no indication of anything like mercury that has been found in it. We know who imported sugar into this country last year. They came through the port of Mombasa. We should be able to go and ask these people, how much sugar did you import? We actually allowed these people to come in with this sugar. On the sugar matter, what exactly are Kenyans saying? 
Here are some of the comments by Kenyans about the contraband sugar that has elicited mixed reaction. Ile kitu tunashindwa kuuliza serikali. Ni kitu gani iko na bei na bei ya sukari ama ni makiri? Na kama sukari iko imewekwa makiri. Kwa nini haijashukuriwa kutoka kwa supermarket na kwa maduka? Tusikie sukari inashukuriwa kutoka kwa maduka. Si si support. Hiyo ni story ya kutufunga macho. Kututoa kwa NYS. Hiyo ni story ya ku tusikue concentrated na story ya NYS to divert attention to sugar. My own personal opinion is that yes uh, there could be some bit of uh, issues regarding the sugar industry but I think it's very important for us to try and uh, carry out investigations or allow the government to carry out proper investigation regarding issues to do with uh, sugar having mercury. About this mercury thing in the sugar I think it's true but I don't know how we are going to survive without sugar. Na hata kama kumebainika wazi ya kwamba kuna mabwe nyenye fulani sababu unajua Kenya ni wachache. Wengine ni wananchi na tafadhali pia wengine tunasindikisha wengine. Kwa hivyo ninaomba ya kwamba at least waangalie zaidi mambo na hii sukari sababu inikana kuwa itaenda kudhuru afya ya mwananchi wa kawaida. Tunaona kwamba it's because of the cheap sugar that hata wakulima wa miwa kule vijijini wanashindwa ku market miwa yao unemployment rate inaenda juu at the end of the day crime rate ina, inazidi kuongezeka na sisi ndio tunaumia kama wa Kenya. Niliona hata jana niliona kwa TV nikaona hao wakubwa wenye walikuwa wanasimamia hiyo idara walishikwa wengine. Na washikiliwe wafuatiliwe waone kweli hiyo kitu imekamilika kabisa kabisa wameshika watu na wamemaliza hiyo kitu yote. And now on that note business to the text a short break. We'll be right back with additional business stories. Don't go too far.